What's going on, guys? Ray Shapley. We're to live in Austin. So this is going to be a deep dive into Dripping Springs, just kind of what's where people are moving to and what's coming. So listen, there are so many neighborhoods in Dripping Springs. A lot of them are larger, like acre plus communities. I'm not going to get into all those. A lot of those are older. I'm going to really focus in this video on where most of my clients end up moving and then also on where things are going, like where the developments are going to be coming to, whether it's shopping, retail, or neighborhood. So let's get into it real quick. The first thing to know about Dripping Springs is, let's talk commutes for a minute. Um, there's a fair amount of traffic that builds up here. So if you're going to move to Dripping, I would stay on the east side of 12 if you're going to be coming into Austin on the regular. Let me turn on my layer. And now that I've got that out of the way, let's talk about what all these shapes are. I love to draw shapes. Sometimes it, I think it helps, but you never know. <clears throat> so let me, let me kind of break it down here for you. The green shapes, these are subdivisions, like master plan communities, right? So these are your typical subdivisions. The yellow communities, these are going to be three-quarter of an acre or larger. So most of these are going to be on septic septic systems, but you're going to get more land. These are going to be more expensive, a little bit older typically. Uh, and then the pink is coming. The dark pink is coming retail. So you'll, you'll understand more as we break break into it. But let's, let's just start all the way here on the uh, east side. So technically dripping probably starts somewhere in here, but this is ETJ area, but Really, these are dripping, these feed into dripping ISD. So these essentially are dripping springs, in my opinion. The first one we get to is down here. So this is Reunion Ranch. Reunion Ranch is a fantastic master plan community. Beautiful homes, great neighborhood all around. It's got a really easy back way into Austin through 1826. Very popular area. The one negative is that it, it's reliant on 1826 for everything. So this is like a, this is a small highway that you're turning out on, like a two lane highway. Um, not everyone loves that. So eventually they'll widen this and whatnot, but who knows when that'll be. Same problem here, but two other neighborhoods to look at. Uh, master plan communities. This is Sky Ridge. This is a newer community. You can still get new in here. And this is uh, Parton. Uh, I believe I've done a video on Parton, but Parton is a master plan community as well. The thing with these is, you know, you're going to have higher tax rates because they are master plan communities and they're newer. So that means it's usually front loaded on the mud taxes and things like that. Uh, I'm going to stick with, actually, let's talk about this. So this is a, an acre, three quarter of an acre plus community called Rimrock. It's a big one. Um, Lots of custom homes in here. Fantastic neighborhood if you can, um, if you want to be, you know, close to both Driftwood, Austin, and Dripping, you know, you can kind of striking distance to everything. Let's talk about High Point and Belterra. So this is, <clears throat> I'd say Belterra is kind of the 800 pound gorilla when it comes to master plan communities for the area. The main advantage to Belterra, well, a couple. Number one, you have an elementary school in the neighborhood, and then right behind it, you have an elementary and a middle school. So if you live in Belterra, depending on where you live, chances are your kids can walk to school. You can walk them to school. A lot of people have golf carts for things like that. And you have shopping at the front of the neighborhood, so you can get up there and you can go to the movies. You can do all sorts of stuff, go to restaurants, things like that, without ever leaving the neighborhood. Very similar to Belterra, down here you have High Point. I like High Point, but I do have one issue with it, and that is you're reliant on really one road. If you want to go up to Belterra shopping, if you want to get up to the new HEB, I'll talk about that in a second, or anywhere, you have to take this road. Well, it passes right by a middle school, uh, Sycamore Springs Middle and, and Elementary. And this most of this road is 35 miles an hour, and then there's a school zone on top of that. And it feels like a highway. You want to go 55, it's 35. It's it's just kind of annoying having to travel this far to get up there. So that's my, that's my one kind of takeaway or negative on High Point. Now moving over here, we've got Sunset Canyon. So this is an acre-plus community I'd say this is probably 
from a from a larger lot standpoint, this is kind of the big neighborhood around. Look how big it is. There's some really cool houses. If you're looking for a house on land that it's you know might need might be dated and needs to be redone man i would be all over sunset canyon it's a great location there's a north and a south but just anywhere in sunset canyon is is phenomenal you're on you're on the east side of downtown dripping you've got a good commute in austin if you need it you can get some land it's just a great neighborhood saratoga hills so i've done a video on this 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 was new construction a couple of years ago most of these houses are you know less than five years old Great topography. Saratoga Hills has some of the best topography of any neighborhood around. Uh, it's gated. It's city water. It's just low tax rate. Oh, by the way, all of these acre plus or three quarter acre plus communities, they all tend to have good tax rates because they don't have muds. The trade off is you don't have sidewalks usually. Um, you have septic things like that. But yeah, Saratoga Hills one of my favorites. And then Heritage Oaks. Heritage Oaks is kind of across the street from Belterra. Um, another great kind of large lot, acre plus community. Now we're going to get into Headwaters. So a lot of people looking at Dripping Springs are heading over to Headwaters and for good reason. So Headwaters, you have great topography that will almost rival Saratoga Hills. Great views on some of the lots. The houses are more affordable than a lot of parts of Dripping. They're not cheap but they're more affordable the cool thing is this so rath Gerber national resource parks you've got a nat national park being formed right here and the way it's going to work is you, there's a there's there's going to there's a big trail system to this neighborhood but the trail system is going to allow you to access the park and you'll see i'll talk about this in a minute but there's coming neighborhoods here and they'll have trail systems to access the park so this is going to be a really cool thing in terms of um you know, if you can buy one of these houses that's back near the park that you can walk to, I think that's a big plus. So the preserve, um, kind of an upper scale community, one of the kind of original upper scale communities in this area. Um, preserve is a, is a really nice one. I think most of them were built in the early 2000s. So not too old of a home. Moving down here, you've got Calatera. Calatera is a big growing neighborhood. It's cool because it has a uh, Onion Creek running through it. And, you know, you Kids can like get on the canoes and whatever and float down the float the parts of the lake, go fishing or parts of the river and go fishing. Over here, you've got Howard's Ranch. So Howard's Ranch, this is a fairly new neighborhood, but what's cool, there's a section of it, ha about half of it, is really charming. It has kind of a vintage design to it. They've just a lot of the homes look like um, older, more stately homes. It's it's really pretty. If you ever get a chance drive Howard Ranch. Uh, it's, it's, it's a higher dollar neighborhood for the area, but just just really a, a ch has some charm to it. It's also right over by Twisted X Brewery, which is right here. So you can walk from the neighborhood to the brewery. All right, coming out of there, we're going to talk a little bit about Arrowhead Ranch and Bunker Ranch. So Arrowhead Ranch is a typical master plan community. It, it is an affordable option in in terms of in comparison with a lot of neighborhoods of getting into dripping and then right next to it you have bunker ranch so bunker ranch is uh three quarter of an acre or larger custom homes there are as far as i know there's still some lots left you can buy a lot in there build a custom home it's a gated community low tax rate all of those things now my issue with these neighborhoods being in here is just getting you know th you if you're coming into austin frequently i've said this before but just getting through this this little pocket is going to be a bit of a bottleneck there's gonna be some traffic up here is esperanza so these are three quarter acre lots this is a couple builders in here the most notable is toll brothers um, not a huge neighborhood i think 100 150 homes but um, if you do want to build new on a larger lot um, through a production builder this is your neighborhood right here and I think there's going to be a lot of development along. There already is, but along um, Bell Springs Road. So this is going to this is going to change pretty fast. All right, I think. Oh, I, I missed one. So here we go. Big Sky Ranch. So this is a Meritage community, the most affordable option in Dripping Springs. Most of them are two stories. Um, you know, they're they're somewhere between kind of that between a house and a townhome type feel. But if you want to be able to walk to things, there's a whole kind of walking trail system coming in. It's, it's already started, but it's going to come in here. The city wants to make this area far more walkable. 
this can access that. So if you want to get in from a price point standpoint, newer or new with good price points, this is a good option. So let's let now that we've kind of moved through all of the um, existing areas that are popular, let's talk about the red areas, the pink and red areas, what's coming. So I'm going to swing back to up here right by Nutty Brown. So the old Nutty Brown Cafe, that's going to be replaced with an HEB. It's going to be done later this year. And this is going to be huge for the area simply because one of the issues with dripping is let's say you live – in any of these areas here, <clears throat> to get to an HEB, a good grocery store, you either have to go 15 minutes into dripping, and this store's a little dated. Um, good store, but it's just a little older. Doesn't have some of the things the newer HEBs have. Or you come all the way here to the new HEB, but this is 20 minutes, right? Down here, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the time of day. So nothing close by. Well, and this, this HEB in dripping is packed. It's busy because it's just servicing so many people. So they're building an HEB here. And from what I understand, it's going to be done, you know, spring of this year. And uh, this will be, I think, a game changer because this will take the pressure off the others. And if you live in this area, it's super convenient. All right, that's coming. They're building that. And then next, <clears throat> this is a big one here. So... The station at Headwaters. So in front of the na neighborhood at the Headwaters, they're building a large mixed-use commercial project. It's going to have at least five or six restaurants. It's going to have a hotel, senior living. It'll be built out in phases over the years. But this is going to be, I mean, people, they like to throw out around terms like the domain. And so this is not going to be the domain. But it's going to be a big commercial project. So if you want to look into it, you can just Google um, the station at Headwaters and find out more about it. But I will say this is going to provide much needed shopping and so on to the dripping area. Um, I'll hopefully get some really good restaurants in uh, this way too. Next we have Wild Ridge. So this is going to be close to 1,000 homes. That's coming in there. The big neighborhood is going to be, uh, you know, there's two possible names for it. I'm just going to call it Double L. We'll see if it's, if that's actually the name they settle on. But this is going to be 2,200 homes. So you're going to have estate homes, garden homes, everything in between. This is going to be Belterra size neighborhood when it's done. Um, you're going to have schools in here, things like that. And this backs up and plugs into this park system. And part of the neighborhood will be able to probably access some of these walking trails and walking down here. So this is something to watch for. It also has a commercial element coming, mixed-use retail um, as well. I don't have all the details on that. Probably going to be similar in size to what they're doing here. Uh, again, restaurants, uh, office, probably a hotel, probably something senior related. Real quick, you know why that that is so popular and I think important? They're doing another senior, they're doing a senior um, living, I believe, in the front of Belterra too. But here's why that matters. So if you, if your family buys in this neighborhood, like uh, Headwaters here or in Belterra, or in double L it's nice to have that option to have the grandparents live at the front of the neighborhood where they're close, but not too close. You know, they're not in the house, but uh, they're, they're close by and they, they have a, they have a setup and sometimes it's not a senior living. Sometimes it's just garden homes. Like you have those kind of this lock and leave community in the front of Belterra. You have it in the front of um, bunker ranch as well. So lock and leave is like a community where, you know, the house is freestanding, but you don't maintain the yard at all. You can just lock the house and go away for a month to Florida or wherever you're going to go. It tends to work really well for the grandparents. So um, that's kind of one of the reasons you'll see that. One other neighborhood here that um, I want to talk about is Heritage. So this is going to be 600 homes. This is being built right now, so you can go in. Um, this will be more entry level, similar to Big Sky Ranch. And then uh, you've also got, uh, Cannon Ranch is going to be 100 homes. There's a few more neighborhoods coming into the area. Uh, down around here, there's going to be some multifamily. But in general, this is the way, this is the development. So if you look at these pink areas, this is where a lot of the growth is coming. Like I said before, there are a ton of cool neighborhoods up around Fitz, off of Fitzhugh. There's so much more to this. I am just kind of wanting to show you, if you're coming to the area and you want to know where a lot of people are 
locating, it's these areas, the yellow and the green. These are where I'd say the majority of my, my folks end up going. Um, there's always exceptions, but just if you kind of want, want to get that idea, because it's a question I get a lot. Anyways, guys, look, just a quick quick overview of dripping, what's coming. Uh, if you guys want to talk more about the area, give me a call. My number will be below, or even better, book a time, set aside 15 minutes, and we'll have a dedicated call. All right, guys, hope this helps. I'll see you on the next one.